Hello and welcome everybody to a new Sapien Masterclass. Today with one of the most versatile multi-percussionists in the world, our good friend, Pete Lockett. Hello and welcome, hey, Pete. <laughs> hey, Christian. Thanks for having me on, man. It's gonna, gonna be fun. Thanks for joining. Thanks for taking the time. So Pete, topic today is rhythmic modulations and symmetrical stickings. Can you give yeah. us a little bit inside of what, what the topic is about, please? Yeah, well, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the some of the methodology that happens when you start to learn Indian percussion. There's a there's a, an amazing uh, kind of almost like a laid out path of, of how things are, are presented and how things are structured when you learn them. And you right. know, one of those one of those important devices is um, for a lot of things that you learn. You learn to to play them, at, you know, with the basic, you know, uh, uh, duple level as, as eighth notes or sixteenth notes. But then you learn to modulate them um, through different time levels, and it's just a really uh, a really great it's a great uh, practice tool to have as a, as a as a percussionist or drum set player. And of course, okay. symmetrical stickings is something that I've been developing um, for quite some while, which came right. out in, in many ways came out of practice routines of wanting to uh, equally exercise both hands um, in the same way that you do with rudiments such as the paradiddle and, you know, right. rudiments that are equal on, on left and right. OK, sounds great. So I hand you over the screen and I'm back in run about half an hour for the question and answer session then later on. OK, Thank you. see Fantastic. you in a bit. Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, well, thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Um, it's it's going to be a, a, a very much from the basics, um, this idea, so we can get across something that uh, that can work for beginners, but then also, you know, for, for intermediate uh, and advanced as well. Because the, one of the great things about a lot of the Indian concepts is that when you abstract them out and you and you start to, you know, employ them, um, then they work across, you know, all of the vocabularies from beginner to advanced, you know, intermediate. So it's, it's all very, very useful, uh, useful stuff to be able to bring into your uh, bring into your playing world and, and use to expand <coughs> your uh, rhythmic vocabulary. Now, one of the things that's that's very common when you when I started to learn the tabla, for example, um, you learn compositions that are called uh, uh, kaida, which kind of means theme and variation. And these compositions are, are, are elaborately developed um, with having a seed of a theme and then only using those components to construct all of the the, the variations that, that that spring from them. So it's very tightly regulated, uh, you know, with with rules and and um, you know do's and don'ts basically. So one of the things that happens with with a lot of kaidas when you're learning is that you modulate them through um, a few different time levels. So normally you would go half speed, one and a half times speed, and um, and double double speed. So that's the most common um, uh, scenario. So basically uh, eighth notes. Eighth note triplets, sixteenth notes. So it's it's a great device to be able to um, bring in and apply to um, to drum rudiments and different um, uh, different stickings, and to create uh, platforms whereby we can take stickings that we know and that that are very uh, you know easy for us to play, and begin to uh, you know expand out across the the what you know you could call it a, a modulation table if you like now i'm, I'm going to go through three uh, five different levels and to begin with i'm going to use a three beat uh a rhythmic unit so we're going to have um we're going to have eighth notes and then we're going to have eighth note triplets 16th notes 16th note triplets and then 30 second notes and we're going to be it's going to be a fairly slow tempo so we can you know, clearly, uh, clearly get nail. You know what we're trying to do. If you know, often as we all know, it, it's very often harder to practice at a slower tempo than it is, uh, you know, a, a slightly faster tempo. So, we're going to briefly look at the syllables. Uh, as you know, syllables are used in Indian drumming um, to represent different strokes on drums, and a whole elaborate language is is built up around that to develop the the overall rhythmic vocabulary. So we're going to use syllables just to demonstrate, but then we're going to use counting and then we're going to convert that into a, into a sticking. So our three beat unit is takita, ta, ki, ta. And we're going to start off at, with eighth notes and we've, we're at uh, about 66 uh, BPM. Ta, ki, ta, ta, 
ta. This is the, the eighth note level. Ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta, ta, ki, ta. Or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. But then we're going to go to triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Ta, ki, ta, ki, ta, 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 ki, ta, ta, ki. Then we're going to go to sixteenth notes. Taki to taki to taki to taki to one two three one two three one two three one two one two three 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 then we're gonna go to uh sixteenth note triplets one two three one two three one two three one two the taki to 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 and then we're gonna go to thirty second notes so with this instead of having takita or or uh, um one two three we're going to have a simple sticking and the sticking is right left left so that's the basic uh sticking um that we're going to have so i'll go i'll run through the basic uh, the basic uh time levels so obviously this is three notes long so in each instance the the bar length will be a bar of a bar of three four okay so first of all with the with the eighth notes i'm going to get the uh the uh, the hi-hat going here as well through three so eighth note level Then we're going to go to triplets. Right, left, left, 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 right, left, left. Sixteenth. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Tacky to tacky to tacky to tacky. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. Then up the next level. We're at the 32nd note level so you can see that those uh, accents uh, are starting to move through move across the the time so even though it's a simple right left left right left left pattern as we start to take it through the different modulative levels we're kind of presented with uh, with different challenges and and different it's placed against the quarter note um, you know in in different ways of course we can set up for ostinatos and do uh, lots of different uh, different stuff with it. So let's make the sticking um, a little bit longer. So we'll still think of this as, as the groups of three, but in actual fact, it will be a group of six. So the sticking that we'll have will be right, left, left, right, right, left. So right, left, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, right, left. So again, we're back to the metronome with these start with the, the eighth, eighth note level
So then we've ended up at the at the, the 30 second note um, level. We've got like massive humidity here in London at the moment. It's just like probably like 85% uh, humidity. So really hot to, uh, it always makes me wonder, you know, when you go, you see the, the amazing drumming that comes out of India, the super virtuosic, intense, fast stuff. And it's one of the hottest countries on the, on the planet. And it's always, a, you kind of think it would come from a, from a colder country, really, like super fast drumming to keep warm. But there you go. Anyway, so uh, slightly a, a side, side thought from that. So let, let's extend that up a little bit more. So um, we're going to have a, a slightly longer sticking, and this will be eight notes, uh, eight notes long. We're going to have right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. So three, three, two, very common. Very common, uh, you know, rhythmic, rhythmic pattern. So we're going to start that exactly the same. It, you know, obviously, you know, you can start with a four beat pattern, a five beat pattern, six beat, seven beat, eight beat, whatever sort of pattern it is you want to you want to uh, use this concept for. The great thing about the concept is that you can take all of the different stickings and all of the different patterns that you know, and you can begin to apply this type of, uh, you know, approach to it. So it means that you um, I saw a, a, a short workshop by. Um, uh, um, who was it by? I've forgotten now. Anyway, uh, they were talking about um, the fact that whenever you practice something, try and make music out of it, which is a kind of a, a really good approach because you can sit and practice the power doodle and do. And sometimes, you know, you can slightly forget the music in it. it becomes like a robotic exercise. Whereas if you can start to imply frameworks such as this, taking it through a, a number of different modulative, modulative levels, then you kind of get, um, you know, a, lo a lot of scope in terms of developing ideas musically, certainly as you get more and more uh, complex sticking. So back, back to the metronome. So we've got right, left, left, three, right, left, left, three, right, left, two. Eighth notes, first of all. Left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Just eighth notes. Right, left, left, right, left, left, triplets. So you can see that's immediately more of a challenge than right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. But what you start to uh, get is the real different rhythmic identity of the same phrase becoming completely different as you uh, transverse through the through the different uh, modulative levels. So now I'll go through the whole the whole uh, chart, the five five levels: eighth note, eighth note triplet, sixteenth note, sixteenth note triplet, and then thirty second notes. Right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. Another challenge that directly comes from that, particularly as you start to explore it with different stickings, is to be able to make each section, uh, you know, groove. So when you when you're in the you know the triplet, you've got to kind of make it make it groove and make it sit in the in the uh, you know in the tram lines uh, nicely. Now, of course, we can apply this to to any sticking. We could take the you know the basic uh, basic paradiddle. For example, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and apply exactly the same concept. So, with with that in mind, you can go to your you know uh, um, you know stick control book, 
and you could just go through the whole book and take each single uh, exercise and make a make a you know a, a big giant exercise out of it and of course then you can orchestrate it around the kit do it with different foot ostinatos um, and stuff like that and that's one of the joys of the indian system itself is that um they take things and they 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 milk every single rhythmic idea for a, hundreds of thousands of different other rhythmic ideas so instead of just you know like you've learned you know uh, uh, when i started out you know i learned the paradiddle and i thought that was it that was the end of the road with the paradiddle a few voicings around the around the drum set but you know the more systems you can put in place to be able to develop these ideas across multi you know multi platforms and multi ways of, of working the, the better really so basic paradiddle right left right right left right left left again same tempo 66 bpm quarter notes with the with the all right, these are the uh, quiet tone uh, hi-hats actually which are, are absolutely fantastic okay so right left right right left right left left eighth notes first of all Back to the eighth note level again, and and you know you can um, you can kind of develop it develop it from there. Um, so the next we're going to kind of leave that for there. Obviously, it, it, it's it's clear that you can use a whole myriad of of different stickings, and you can even use the stickings that I'm going to be <clears throat> going to be talking about next. Now, this is um, what we've just been looking at is from my book on Hudson music, which is called Bars, Beats, and Building Blocks. And involves a lot of rhythmic modulation. It takes a lot of phrases and patterns, and you know, besides stickings that are regular, like a, a, a eighth note or sixth or sixteenth note sticking, you can of course take patterns, you know, or whatever, and, and modulate those through all of these different um, time levels. And then of course you can move on to you know putting in quintuplets, septuplets, nine tuplets, stuff like that. So you can you it's in, it's infinite basically. <clears throat> so that's bar beats and building blocks from my from my Hudson book, um, and this is from symmetrical stickings for snare drum and drum set, which is uh, also available on Hudson. And it, it, as as I said to Christian earlier, it came about from um, from practice routines in a way, um, wanting to uh, uh, you know give as much work to my left hand as my right hand. So obviously we get that with with rudiments such as the uh, such as the paradiddle, for example. Um, but what I wanted was longer uh, rudiments, longer stickings that I could then invert over over two bars, for example. So let's take an example of, of um, you know, what I'm talking about here. So what we're going to do is we can have a bar of, of uh, four, four, 16th notes, 16 notes per bar. And it's going to span over two bars. And we're going to start out the first part of the sticking um, is going to be. Um, the the double paradiddle, okay. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left. Uh, sorry, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. So that takes up six uh, six of the eight eight notes, eight eighth notes in the bar. And then we're going to have right, left, right, right to finish it up. So that finishes the first bar. Uh, six six four. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So we've ended on right, left, right, right, which means then the second bar is the inversion of that. L left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, left. Sorry, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So that's that's what it um, that's what it looks like. 
he said, losing the losing the notation. Anyway, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. That's the that's the the, the sticking. Okay. Oh, here it is. Brilliant. Okay, so here we have the actual sticking that you can see. So you can see right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. So that's up to the line. And then the second half is the opposite. Left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So what you get is you get much longer, in more involved stickings that create a lot of options for phraseology on um, on percussion, for example, on the congas with the with the heel tip technique and accents and open tones on on multi drum setup, or on drum sets coming out from the snare to the floor tom, small tom, maybe other toms, crossover hi hat stuff. So a lot, lot of options. Right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, left. So it's a really cool uh, workout for for um, both sides, the left and the right. And it's also really cool. to split it around uh, hi-hat and, and uh, snare drum with some accents and stuff like that. And of course, there's a lot of other things you could do. You could, um, for example, instead have five, five, six. So you could have right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, two groups of five, and then half a paradiddle, right, left, right, right. So there you're in you're, uh, five, five, four. So then you're in, in, uh, in seven. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right. And then the other side, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So that would that would uh, that would look like like this. So there you're gonna have right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Equaling seven seven quarter quarter notes. So it's a really good way to start to develop, uh, you know, different different groove patterns that kind of throw out, particularly when you're here, kind of throw out some some uh, some different accents, a lot of different um, options, especially if you get the the full kit involved. And then if you start to cross over and do you know, uh, a myriad of kind of different different uh, possibilities for all toms, a lot of different stuff. So again, in, in symmetrical stickings for snare drum on Hudson, there's, I mean, it, it's a book, a little bit like stick control in the sense that it's a book that's just rammed with, uh, rammed with different stickings and different sticking variations. Um, and, you, you know, you can apply all of those to, um, you know, to different applications on the drum set or percussion the other thing that's that's useful that i do in the book is for each sticking i then shift them across um, into four different uh, four different starting places so with each single sticking you then get multiple stickings of of that um, that the mathematics of that sticking but then displaced into into different parts in the bar so that's kind of what i'm gonna you know that's that's it for what i'm gonna uh, do in in the um, in the workshop so I'm going to uh, ask ask Christian to come back and um, and see what um, see what else we've got and we've got some questions I think and a few different things uh, like that. And I'm right back. Thanks, Pete. Great. This was great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Spon so sponsored uh, by uh, sponsored by everyone. <laughs> <laughs>
That sounds great. Yeah, uh, you showed the uh, the Quieton Hyatts right early on, right? So these are great, great yeah. low volume, yeah, great for I practicing at home, right? So I love these, absolutely love these, really fantastic. And you know, I use them in the studio actually. I use them for recording, especially with my my new remix. Great. It's such a yeah, great so sound. Really cuts through. It's brilliant. Great. And great for practice, of course, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for everybody watching, right, here we open up for a question answer with Pete, right? So please send us your your questions to Pete. So uh, I got right one right here. With all the different styles and genres, um, pop, jazz, ethnic styles, right? So do you have a personal favorite style that you that you like to play or prefer? Well, I guess, you know, in, in a way, it's, it's why I've gone on to, um, you know, run so many of my own projects and, and be so active as a collaborator is that, uh, you know, I kind of find because what I do is so hybrid. I mean, besides playing in, in, you know, a lot of different musical environments and different, different settings, you know, I'm, I'm like a musical magpie really. So mm. it was kind of in a way more natural for me to, um, to open that up to my own collaborations and my own, my own, uh, solo work. So, but in mm. terms of, you know, what, what a favorite is, you know, really it's going to be down to a situation where where you can express yourself so if someone you know someone calls you in and they say oh you know i want to play you a a, a, a record of something a tape mm -hmm. a, a track and say oh, i want you to play exactly like this it's not so interesting for me but if someone says oh i want you to create something then that's a lot more interesting i had a funny session come in the other day which i which i turned down actually i, I said no to the guy in the end but he he's, he wanted uh, something that was like a specific track so he sent me the, you know, he sent me the, wrote to me and said, oh, I want it to be like such and such a, such and such a track. And I, I listened to the track and I, and I was like, I couldn't. I said, well, can you send me, you know, send me the track that you're using as a template for this? Because, you know, then I can understand what the percussion is. And the track that he sent me didn't have any percussion on it whatsoever. Hmm. <laughs> so I just, I, I gave it to someone else. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. I mean, you, you also did a lot of uh, film music stuff, right? So you uh, did a couple of James Bond movies, uh, yeah. right? So, so big, big blockbuster movies. Um, so when you be called in, are you actually getting a full script of what to play or are you actually involved in the writing process as well? I think in the beginning, um, the first, you know, proper film stuff I started to do is with, with David Arnold. Um, in the beginning, um, it was more prescriptive prescriptive but you know as I, I was equally it was equally balanced at the time with session work of my own um, projects my own cds and stuff like that and, and uh -huh. all of these people that were hiring me were were listening to those and so what happened in the end was um, you know they would just give me you know free reign to free reign to do whatever i wanted really and say look we just can do what you want on it compose what you want on it i okay. mean obviously there's a rough a rough direction you know it may be it with the bond stuff for example um you know it, it might be an ethnic setting if, if mm. one of them was in africa another one was in yeah. Azerbaijan, stuff like that so but pretty much in terms of what to play i mean but also that's how i chose to develop my my session career i stopped turning down the stuff that people wanted me to play you know like this and mm -hmm. only accept the stuff where i could kind of put my put my personality on it right so we got a question here from Lindsay um, asking for any tips on counting and not getting lost, especially when you have long Indian time signatures. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things of, I mean, if you can, if you can count and play, um, it's, it's really advantageous. And, and that's where the, where the phonetics come in really useful because when you, when you start to learn Indian rhythm, you're learning different clapping cycles with claps and waves and finger counts. And so you always kind of get a, a, a good feeling of, of where the, where the time is in pieces. Um, and the other thing I'd say is have a good idea of the mathematics of the time signature that you're in. So, you know, if you're in, if you're in, um, five four for example you know and you're wondering about well what 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 fills do i do you know what what do i do in five four 
then there's lots of ways you know you can start to chop it up and and create different templates for it so for example let's say you're over two bars of five four you could have a bar of two four and two bars of four four equaling ten so if you have a structure like that where you've imposed a time signature in there that you know much more comfortably like four four as we, we all do um, then you can be more you know you can phrase within those four four bars quite comfortably but you know you've just got to play the two the two the two four bar at, at the beginning so there, there's little different tricks and different ways and that's why i said to have an idea of the mathematics of of any time signature that, that you're in right so you got a question here from anthony asking uh, pete would you please demonstrate how you would start displacing these rhythms well, you know, there's one really good way to do that. Um, well, there's lots of good ways to do it. I mean, Matt Gasker, I know that what he does is he, he'll, he'll get a rhythm and he'll put it in logic and he just drags 16 copies of it and displaces them all um, and then learns all of them, which is a brilliant, a brilliant idea, particularly on the offbeat 16th. It's, it's really, uh, really hard to do. Um, a simple way to displace something again comes back to the mathematics of, of something. So say you're in four, uh, you know, let's just say, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's a paradiddle bass. Something like, you know, just a straight four, just to demonstrate the idea. So if, if as long as you're counting, you know, where, where you are in the in the bar and everything, um, if you put a group of um, five in. And then you can carry on with the same regularity that you've been doing with the four, uh, but then you're off beat by a sixteenth. But you know, because you've played five, then to get back on the beat, you, you've got to play three to get back on. So if you're... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. So there's different little things, little tricks you can put in there to just for simple displacement um, of of um, of rhythmic ideas, but I think another good way is the the Matt Gasco idea because that's when you hear him switch in the middle of a track and he'll switch to that. Uh, you know, you, you it just completely throws you. Every every listener will be thrown by, it. and then it comes back in, and it's it's all about that creating tension and release. You know, you're creating tension, you're twisting something, and then you're letting it naturally come back into position great so um talking about your, your symbol setup that you use um do you have any favorite favorite symbol models or special effects or stack combinations that you yeah. prefer well I, you know the, the stack thing is quite a new thing isn't it really i mean you in the last you know what's about five or six years i guess yeah, but yeah. you know i i love you know putting different things together to get you know, and that's one of the one of the one of the many great things about Sabian is that there are so many choices. Uh, you know, especially with a lot of the ozone stuff and things with you know the holes and the different um, you know different ways that, that the symbols are crafted and hand hammered. Um, you know, for me, certainly one of my favourite things for for drum set and percussion is are the, are the choppers because they just mm -hmm. work so brilliantly, and they also work great with brushes. So if you're a at a lower volume and you want a like a hi-hat type sound in your percussion setup you know you can whip a couple of choppers in there and, and uh you know that's great dw do the the new low boy um hi-hat you know the, the small foot hi-hat which is which I'm, I'm using a lot and i tend to use a couple of 12 um a, a, maybe an, an aero crash and a, and a mini holy china mm -hmm. um, which work absolutely brilliant but i mean to be honest you know that every sort of china 12 inch sabian china that i've tried it with it works works really well obviously you get different characteristics you know sure as a percussionist the omni hand crash is is just killer i mean it's the only uh it's the only symbol of that range of symbols the omni and the um the, the other one i forget the name but you know the um <laughs> picanta picanta hand crash there you go yeah that's the yeah. one um it, they're the only hand crashes that I've ever come across that actually work and sound like they don't sing like half a second after you've after you've hit it, you know. Yeah. Because they're the so thin, happened, right? 
Pardon? And, and they're so thin, especially on the edge, right, that you can just amazing, tip with your... Amazing. And the other thing about that is in the studio, one of the things that's, you know, anyone that's been done a lot of, um, I don't know, maybe drum set players would be artists, but less often, but it's more of a percussionist thing of, of cymbal rolls. And you always get down the cans, oh, I can still hear the mallets. But with those, with the with the um, the, the Omni, you you literally, if you're right near the edge, you can't hear the mallets at all. You just mm. hear this amazing cymbal roll. So I mean, they're, they're you know, the HXX and the HH hand hammered, you know, only hand hammered cymbals in the world, apart from one other company. So what's not to love about that, you know? And you know, I've been there to the factory and seen them in action and it's i mean anyone who's been to the nam show would, would have seen the guys there doing yeah, yeah. the hand hammering and so just amazing and and yeah my, my soon to arrive thunder sheet that i'm very excited <laughs> about uh, about yeah. getting getting to yeah so thank you um got a question here from uh, benjo actually asking what you're currently practicing what you are practicing recently actually I'm practicing packing up and moving home. That's what I'm practicing. <laughs> Taking all my time. You know, the funny thing is, since lockdown, it's been months, but, you know, I've been so busy. Like, I've written two books. I've got a, a book, the Kanjira book that came out on Hudson, which involved recording, you know, 1,400, almost 1,400 audio examples. I'm, I'm writing a new book that uh, with Steve Smith. Um, I've, you know, I've finished a couple of um, recording recording projects, and now we're moving home. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I need more, more room for drums and cymbals, basically. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I haven't got as much time as I want for practice, honestly. What a bit, but what you know, some of the things that I'm focusing on when I, when I can, you know, get get some time is yeah. uh, hand drumming, hand drumming, frame drumming, snapping techniques, um, and and some uh, some Rick stuff that I've always kind of neglected. You know, those two things. So I'm trying to be. I mean, if I, you know. If you hear me practicing it, it sounds like uh, my, my fingers are just like a load of sausages or something. I just sound like that. It sounds horrendous. And, and that's the thing. You've got to be patient. And, you know, um, you know it takes years to, to uh, you know, develop some of those different techniques. You know, yeah, I mean, like yeah, Tabla, for example, sure. you know, I had six, six years. I had six, uh, four, uh, four, four hour lessons a week um, and just practiced the whole time, you know, for six years. So that's that's kind wow. of what it, you know, the, commitment it takes actually to to uh, but having said that there's a, a new philosophy that i've employed into my uh, into my daily life and it's kaizen japanese philosophy which it and mainly used in the business world but in actual fact that the, the core meaning of it if we want to simplify it is that you take all of these little bits and they they all add up to something so mm -hmm. if if you go to a drum clinic and you see a drum set player and they say, oh, yeah, well, I practice for eight hours a day and uh, that's the only way you can do it. And then the people go away thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm never going to be able to do that. I've got to work, I've got to do this, you know, I've got kids, whatever. Um, but the, the, the object of Kaizen is that, that each little bit that you do, even if it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour, it all does have a value and it all adds up to the end um, thing. And you'll be surprised, you know, I've had some students who haven't had that much time and i've you know since mm -hmm. you know just um you know practice little bits and put it together they they actually improve you know right. because it takes some of the pressure off as well if you think oh well it's only practice has only got a value if i do eight hours then you've immediately created a disincentive for yourself so mm -hmm. as, as many as those you can get rid of the better really yeah it's kind of like that repetitive um doing things repetitive right even if uh, in, in a short time but it actually reminds the brain actually for it right absolutely yeah, yeah. definitely got a question from anthony basically asking for matt's uh, last name that you mentioned earlier um so he can see actually doing displaces those beats oh, right. Ma matt gartska and he's the drummer with animals as leaders yeah brilliant, right. brilliant do you have drummer. do you have any um traveling coming up for drum events or some some no, performances no, I'm, I'm, you know I, actually as soon as the, the scenario happened you know in in earlier this year i said to my yeah. wife that's it nothing gonna happen till spring next year and you know i'm i'm maybe you know whatever but i'm not going to fly anywhere before then yeah. i'm not gonna, yeah. you know if i pulled out of your work you know even you see nam cancelling the other day and, and um mm. you know so not not before the middle of next year i don't think honestly 
Yeah, but exactly. it sounds like, I mean, with, with the pro projects that you describe in the, the writing of new material, it seems... Yeah, and I've got a new project. I've got quite a, project busy. With, a project with Peter John Vitesse, who's an amazing keyboard player uh, and composer and, and writer and producer. And uh, we've got an artist in residency series at, at Paul Lighthouse Theatre, which is a nice theatre down in the south of England. I think it's a 1,500 seater theatre. But we're doing like a behind closed doors uh, artist in residency series. They're collaborating with lots of people and it'll all be streamed online. So, I mean, that's something that, that I, you know, I'm really, really excited about, you know. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So, Pete, thank you very much for joining today. Thanks for taking your time. Right. Great, great pleasure. Massive pleasure. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And yeah, uh, stay safe, everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye.